on the 17th anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attacks, the president did something that is very difficult for him. He talked about 9-11 without lying. The president read a speech in teleprompters that was written for him by White House speechwriters, and so it did not include any of the president's lies about 9-11. In the past, the president has lied about what he saw on 9-11. He said he saw thousands of people in New Jersey celebrating the attack on the World Trade Center on the day that it happened. That was a lie. He didn't see any people doing that, none. The president lied about what he did after 9-11. He lied about having contributed to charitable funds for the victims of 9-11. That was a lie. He had not contributed anything until he became a presidential candidate. And Donald Trump's worst lie about 9-11 is the lie that got the least attention. Most of the news media completely ignored Donald Trump's worst lie about 9-11. It is the lie that he told about what he personally lost on 9-11. How did he Dr. keep us Trump. safe when the World Trade Center came down? The world... I lost hundreds of friends. As soon as Donald Trump said that in the campaign debate in South Carolina, that he lost hundreds of friends on 9-11, I said that he was lying. I didn't know how many friends he'd lost on 9-11, but I knew it wasn't hundreds. And the next day on Meet the Press, Donald Trump changed that answer to many, many friends. He said he lost many, many friends on 9-11. And once again, I immediately tweeted that that was a lie. And I still didn't know exactly how many friends Donald Trump might have lost on 9-11. But knowing the way Donald Trump lies as I do, I suspected then that the real number was zero. And then I checked and the real number was Zero. Donald Trump did not attend a single 9-11 funeral, not one. There has been much debate in the news media about how do you know when a Trump lie is a lie and not just a falsehood that he believes. One way of knowing that a Trump lie is a lie is that he stops saying it. And when I held that lie up to Donald Trump's face, even he could see how evil that lie was. And even Donald Trump knew he could never try to tell that lie again. And so he never did. In a political debate on a Saturday night, he said he lost hundreds of friends. And the next morning on Meet the Press, he said he lost many, many friends on 9-11. And then he never, ever said it again, never. In a political debate to score points, Donald Trump tried to steal the grief of 9-11 families and then use that grief as his own. Use it as a weapon in a political debate. And the one thing we know Donald Trump has never felt about 9-11 is grief. In his lifelong quest for attention, Donald Trump managed to get himself on local television in New York City on 9-11 after both of the World Trade Center towers fell. And he had no idea how to even begin to express grief because, of course, he couldn't feel any. Instead, the feeling that he had that day on 9-11, the thing he found within himself, was pride. Pride that he believed he now had the tallest building in Lower Manhattan now that the World Trade Center had collapsed. 40 Wall Street actually was the second tallest building in downtown Manhattan, and, and it was actually before the World Trade Center was the tallest. And then when they built the World Trade Center, it became known as the second tallest, and now it's the tallest. Did you hear any grief there? That was on 9-11. And it wasn't grief that the president felt today when he got off Air Force One in Pennsylvania to attend the 9-11 commemoration of Flight 93 that takes place there every year. There is only one president in our history who could arrive at such a solemn and tragic commemoration and behave as if he was arriving at a rally. Donald Trump has attended the 9-11 commemoration services in his hometown of New York City only once in 2016 when he was running for president. Every year, family members who lost, lost loved ones on 9-11 shared the difficult duty of reading the names of everyone who was killed at Ground Zero. It takes hours, and local television still covers every minute of it, as they did today. And that's when you see the real 
pain of 9-11, the real grief. And on this day, none of that grief seems diminished by the passage of time. On this day, you see the faces and you hear the voices of the living victims of 9-11, the people who lost husbands and wives, sons and daughters, fathers and mothers, grandmothers and grandfathers. Richard Michael Caproni, Jose Manuel Cardona, Dennis M. Carey Sr., Edward Carlino, Michael Scott Carlo, and my father and guardian angel, Cesar Amaranto Alfred. We miss you and love you always. And my grandfather, Joseph Biscadlo, even though I've never met you, I'll never forget you. I love you.